Is it possible to change daylight into moonlight with just your editing software? We've all seen this technique of turning day to night in big budget films and may have not even realized it. In Nope by acclaimed director Jordan Pill and Robert Zemeckis' classic Castaway, we've seen this illusion brought to life through the magic of color grading. Lighting up the night can be a challenge if there's not the time or the budget for it, let alone the amount of light required to capture wide shots where you can clearly see the surroundings. But this can be done cleverly in post in Premiere Pro, Resolve, or Final Cut in this journey we're about to embark on. All my life I've barely spoken. Your words have been so broken. I've been under your hypnosis. Cell phone became your brother. Internet replaced your mother. So here I've chosen three shots that'll work for us. The first of a woman wearing a bright red dress standing on a street corner with lights that are already lit. And you might be thinking the lighting presents a problem for us, but that'll actually help us sell the effect with the technique that I'm about to reveal. The second shot is a wide of a woman walking on the rocky shore of a lake or ocean. And the third is a tighter shot of a woman walking through dense foliage. In each case, our goal is to transform these into a day for night or moonlight look in four steps. Just pay attention to each one as each presents different scenarios and challenges to overcome. Step one, exposure. Our goal in this first step is to make the shots darker so we're losing detail atypical of a night shot. In our first shot in Resolve, we'll use the Luma Curve to bring down the overtones, midtones, and undertones like so, moving the tone curve darker across the board. We want the deepest shadows to remain very dark and the street light to remain very bright. So that is why we're pulling down on the overtones here in the curve while not touching the top point of the highlights. In our next shot of the woman walking by the lake in Premiere, we'll again use the Luma Curve, but this time, since we're not dealing with artificial lighting, we want the highlights to be a lot less bright. We'll drag down on the highlights, overtones, midtones, and undertones. And I'm not concerned if we lose detail in the shadows, so long as we retain some detail in the midtones, so we can at least see her face, the bushes in the background, and some detail on the ground. Finally, for the woman walking through the foliage, in Final Cut Pro, we'll repeat the same scenario. I'll use a Luma Curve to bring down the highlights, overtones, midtones, and undertones down. And it's okay to lose some detail in the shadows. By the way, you can download these same clips from ArtGrid. I'll include a link in the description. This isn't sponsored, I just know it can help getting practice working with the same footage. Okay? Step two, blue cast. This is where we start to introduce cooler tones that we often associate with moonlight. If the effect gets a little too strong here, not to worry, we'll fix that in the next step. In all three softwares, we'll use the color wheels to introduce blue in the highlights and midtones in a top-down fashion, the same way that lighting affects the tonal range in a top-down way. We don't want to introduce blue into the shadows as that'll make the grade look hyper stylized and unnatural. Now we're getting the moonlight effect. Step three, hue and saturation. The physics of darkness is that there's very little color information that reflects off objects and then reaches our eyes. Therefore, we want our colors to be desaturated. We'll go to the hue versus sat curve to desaturate colors at different rates. Then use other hue and saturation curves to refine the hue and luminance of certain colors. In Resolve, we'll use the Hoover Sat Curve to desaturate the red dress, and then add some saturation back to the yellow and orange tones of the street lights. Then with the Hoover's Luma Curve, we'll make the red dress a little darker. Because of the moonlight we introduced in the previous step, the highlights of the street lights are looking a little greenish, so with the Hoover's Hue Curve, we'll make them warm again. Finally, these other lights are still too tinted, so with the Lumiverse Sat Curve, we'll desaturate the brightest highlights, taking color out of them. In Premiere, we'll use the Hoover Sat Curve to desaturate the cool tones just a bit and desaturate everything else. For Final Cut, we'll use the Hoover Sat Curve and perform the same correction, desaturating the cool tones just a bit and everything else a lot more. In this particular case, the foliage is still looking too green, so if you have foliage in a scene, you'll want to use the Hue vs. Hue Curve to make it a bit more bluish. Step number four, masking. This may be the most complex and creative part of the day for night look, but this is where we'll reshape the lighting in such a way to really mimic moonlight. Let's analyze what this shot needs in order to really sell this. The most obvious issue is the bright sky. So we'll draw a mask around it, feather it a lot, and then bring the midtones and highlights down until the sky is almost pitch black. The mask is also affecting this area with the light bulbs, so we'll draw a mask around them and use it to remove the area from our main mask. 
Look at the difference this one effect made on making this look more like a night shot. Let's see what else we can do. Except for the sky and this area illuminated by the streetlight, everything else could be a bit darker and bluish. I'm talking about the whole corner where the woman is standing and the sidewalk. So we'll draw a mask for those areas and use the color wheels to make them darker and cooler. For my taste, the woman's skin is a bit too bright, so I'll draw a mask including only her face, neck, and chest, and darken it even more. Then I want to make this bottom area of the sidewalk and some parts of the walls in the corner to be a bit darker as well. We'll use masks to do that. And as a final touch, this area here with the street light could look warmer so it's more evident that the bulbs are what are actually illuminating the walls and ground. For that, we'll use two circular masks and push them orange into the image with the gain color wheel. Of course, if there's any movement in the shot, you'll need to track all of these masks, but at the end, this is really amazing and your audience may have no idea that this was even filmed during daylight hours. For the second shot, the main issue with lighting is how bright and saturated the forest looks across the lake. We shouldn't be able to see much detail at that distance. So with the HSL qualifier, we'll isolate that bright area and then use a mask to isolate it even further, making sure that the correction doesn't affect the highlights in the water as we want to preserve those. Then with the color wheels, we'll make the highlights and midtones darker. To me, this is already looking great, but I know we can push this further. I'll create a mask to make this whole area at the bottom of the frame darker, which helps create the illusion that the light in the shot comes almost exclusively from the water reflecting the moonlight. And as a final touch, I think the image is looking a little too contrasty for a pitch dark night. So with the color wheels, we'll bring the highlights and midtones for the whole image down and raise the shadows up a bit to compensate. Then again with the color wheels, we'll push more till into the midtones and highlights. And finally, I'll bring the overall saturation down a bit. Again, if there's camera movement, be sure to track all the masks in the shot. Let's play it back. Ooh. Dark and mysterious, that's incredible. For our third image and final cut, we'll draw a mask simulating the path of moonlight coming through the foliage and landing on this side of the character. We'll need to invert the mask and use the color wheels to make the surroundings darker in the midtones. And as a final touch, we'll introduce a bit more blues in the midtones for the overall image. Let's play it back. Perfect. Now let's take a look at all three images from the base beginning, exposure step, Moonlight Step, Fine Tuning the Hue and Saturation, and finally, Relighting the Scene with Masks. I'd say this looks flawless in all three. We've done some pretty awesome things today, haven't we? But as you saw, it took a lot of steps with some advanced tools to get this look. Well, there's an easier, faster way to do this that I want to tell you about with a plugin called CinemaGrade. If you want to get this look, but without the intimidation, CinemaGrade is a user-friendly color grading plugin that works in Resolve, Premiere, and Final Cut Pro. With CinemaGrade, it's easy to transform your log footage to Rec. 709 and do easy point-and-click grading right inside the viewer. Changing the color of the sky and skin tones is as easy as clicking and dragging. Then group clips together and perform easy copy-paste corrections between them with a single click. It features Lightroom style controls, a false color mode for cinematic exposure, easy shot matching, real-time previews of your favorite LUTs, and support for the X-Rite color checker chart for doing automatic corrections. Give CinemaGrade a whirl risk-free for 30 days and get 20% off with coupon code MOONLIGHT20 at checkout. I'll include it as the first link in the description. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it helps you in creating the moonlight effect. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and then the bell so you don't miss the next one. I'll see you in the next video that'll be dropping soon. Let's make cinema quality video.